Lecture three, the basic input-output relationships. Now, do you remember the, uh, the national accounting identity we had in uh, lecture one? We had um, the plus uh, m x y plus x, okay? This being GDP and this being GNE, gross national expenditure, gross domestic product, okay? That was the fundamental in national accounting identity. Okay, and now I'm going to derive the fundamental input-output relationship from this, from this equation, okay? Uh, that's capital X. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add intermediate consumption um, on this side and intermediate production on that side to give I can do that because I've done it on the left hand side and on the right hand side. It's intermediate consumption, okay? Good. Um, next thing I'm going to do is Call this uh, gross output. I actually should make a D superscript here to say that it's domestic, okay? Domestic value added and domestic final demand, okay? So we have gross output, or actually gross input, sorry, this gross input because it's on the input side equals domestic final demand plus intermediate demand plus exports. Okay? Now, we know from the first equation I wrote and the first lecture, we wrote that gross input must equal gross output. And to save myself writing one line, I just change the subscript. It's gross output, or simply x. And then I'm going to combine domestic final demand and export into final demand and call that just y. Okay? And this T. All right. Now these things so far are just scalars. They're just one, one number because they're for an entire economy. And you've seen in lecture two that really these things are broken down in, in, into institutional uh, sectors, for example, corporations and households and all this, so that really these things are not scalars but they're matrices. So let's write that equation in matrix form. And because you know that x out equals x in must hold for every sector, okay? So, so that must be, must be turned then into a vector identity. So we write, now put that by underscore, I mean it's underscored, it's a, it's a vector, double underscore is a matrix, equals t plus y. But hey, that can't be. That's wrong, no? Because you can't add a vector to a matrix. Yeah? Um, basically, what you do, look at your notes from lecture two. Um, if you add intermediate to final demand, you sum across the columns. Right? And you can do that conveniently by using a summation operator. One. Uh, for those that need to brush up their matrix algebra, one, let's say, to do that, let's say this is your, your T matrix, and then one, this summation operator, is a, is, an, is a vector with just ones on there. Right? And if you know how to multiply a matrix by a vector, you see that it is row times column is this first element. Second row times this column is the second element third row times this column is the third element. So you see nicely that a, 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 a sum operation across columns can be really elegantly written down by just using this one, this summation operator. And, in, and only, then, um, only then can you actually transform this scalar equation into, into a matrix equation. 
you find publications where they're really sloppy and they leave this out and add vectors to, to matrices, but it's better to write it down so that the, the, uh, the dimension of these objects are, are clear. Okay. Next thing. This T, as we saw in the, uh, in the second lecture, is basically this, this square matrix um, which, which tells you what every intermediate producer in the economy delivers to just to everyone else. But, uh, so basically you'd say it's, it's a matrix that, that describes you the interdependency of sectors in an economy right, and how much everyone depends on each other and to what extent. Or you could also say it's a matrix that tells you what you need to produce something. If you look, for example, uh, at any one column, and let's say that this that number three is the car industry, you can tell what you need to make a car. And so that explains to you that also this matrix, or a version of that, has been called a production recipe a matrix. Um, well, of course, uh, if you have a transaction matrix like, like this, you still have absolute values because in this matrix T you will see that there are um, absolute amount of dollars. For example, the amount of uh, steel, let's say a few million dollars that uh, are uh, bought by the car industry to make cars, for example. Now, uh, it's, it's, uh, if you wanted to compare, let's say, the Australian uh, way of making cars with the Japanese way of making cars, of course, you'd have to take into account that the Japanese car industry is much, much larger than the Australian car industry. And you couldn't really compare the figures if they were an absolute value. So what we do, um, we divide every entry in that matrix by uh, the gross output uh, of that respective sector to see how much, say, steel is needed by the car industry per output of car. And then you really have a production recipe because it's the same. Uh, let's say you have a, a recipe for making a cake. Well, how many eggs do you need? Well, you ask, well, how many cakes do you make? Well, how many eggs per cake do you need? So then we have a production recipe. Mathematically, how this works is that you, um, you make the following operation. Uh, you say that um, uh, you want to construct a matrix uh, for which um, T equals AX. So you're interested in this matrix A because that's your, your production recipe matrix. Well, why is this a production recipe matrix? Now, um, do the following, right? Uh, T x to the minus 1 equals A x x to minus 1. And then you see that T x to minus 1 equals A. So this matrix A is the same as T times x to the minus 1. What does that mean? What have I done, just done there? You see, I've brought x over to the other side, okay? But x is a vector, what you see here, minus 1, it's an inversion. But something has happened here. Well, you can't invert a vector, you know, because a vector doesn't have an inverse. You can only have an inverse in linear algebra of an object that, that, that's symmetrical. So what you do, you have to turn this vector x into a diagonal matrix where these values of x are on the diagonal. And that thing, a diagonalized vector is called x with a hat. The hat denotes diagonalization. Okay? And only then, of that thing, you can write the inverse, but not of this. Okay? So that's the first thing I did. I diagonalized this. And then from the right hand side, I, I post multiplied with the inverse of that matrix. And the matrix times its inverse cancels. Okay? That's just the unity matrix. Right hand side. And then on the left hand side, you have. Basically, in, in simple speak, you'd have t divided by x. And that's exactly what you want, because you want to divide every element of your transaction matrix by gross output to get your production recipe. 